Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. Welcome back. We're at a point in the season that you can start just ripping out rolls on certain weapons that you want. So if there is something that you really want, go out and get it. Now's the time to get the exact one that you want. Today, I want to talk about the Energy 150 RPM Lightweight Frame Hand Cannon, Jack Queen King 3. If you're behind the season, you pick it up from the Nessus Obelisk, but most are past that. Easy farming to pick up the bounties and donate. And this is another weapon that feels different depending on what platform and what input you're using. As a start, it is absolutely loaded for PvE. And for the Crucible, it isn't necessarily bad. It is, though, kind of an acquired taste. That's the best way I can put it, and I will go into that in a short moment. I've obtained all the roles to sort through and talk about. The base stats are on the screen. It's tied for the best range out of all legendary 150s. And the hand cannons live in that 25 to 28 meter range. And 6 to 7 meters past that, you're out of range. They don't really challenge pulses too well anymore. In range, though, they're very sticky and they're very accurate. All sights that it has grant plus 5 aim assist. So it does have 96 aim assist and 100 recoil direction. And that 100 recoil direction means vertical and very consistent recoil. It has fairly low stability though, the Spare Rations has 14 more base stability, though kinetic, you can feel the difference. But the even bigger difference is that the Spare Rations is a slim hand cannon. So before I get into the sights, the magazines, the perks, the combinations, here's the part that I think is an issue for a lot of players. Console players suffer the most, but it does cross over into PC and even into mouse and keyboard. And this is talking right now about PvP usage, because in PvE it's fine, it's great, there's a whole lot to talk about there, but this hand cannon on console has a couple key things going on. And these could be some reasons why you don't like it. We know Jack Queen King is sticky, we know it has a 100 recoil direction stat. It hits certain stats like right on the money. That's great, kind of funny, it's called the Jack Queen King 3 because there are three things that stand out about it. Number one is the stability. It can be felt. It's really low. It doesn't really bother me, but it can bother some people. But it's the second thing. It's that stability paired with the weapon model. I can deal with the stability, but not the stability with this weapon model. I don't know how to describe it. It's really wide. It's kind of chunky. Just a really big weapon model. When firing the experience with it, it pairs with a third thing. That's going to be the console field of view. Low stability, even when you add on stability, it's got a chunky wide model and a low field of view. To me, it doesn't feel good. For the Crucible, I believe it's low on the overall hand cannon ranking because of this. And like I said, it's kind of an acquired taste. Imagine this shadow from this tree is a player. When firing, that shadow gets lost behind the recoil because the stability is so low. And when you strafe, the recoil is up there, the target gets lost. This isn't taken into account you receiving flinch, you trying to actively aim and be accurate. The weapon model's in the way, it's a huge hand cannon. Most of the time, it's just very hard to see your enemy to track them, and obviously exaggerated, but it kind of feels like you're trying to hand cannon with a Yotun. It's massive, and to me, it's somewhat of a miserable experience at times. You compare those things to the Waking Vigil. Immediate noticeable difference with the gun model when it's firing, when you're strafing, the size, all that, all those issues are gone. So for this review, that needs to be a main talking point. On PC, it does feel better, but those things are still there. It comes down to if it feels good for you when it comes to the Crucible, and I think a lot of players are caught up with that 96 aim assist stat and the 100 recoil direction, and I feel that those two things are kind of the only leg that it has to stand on. Moving on for the masterwork, range for mouse and keyboard, stability for controller. The third masterwork is going to be neutral, it's going to be handling. That way you can max out its strength. For the sights, each one again grants plus 5 aim assist. The wild card sight is going to be sure shot. The biggest bump to range at plus 10, but negative 10 to handling and stability. I would say that this is almost exclusive for mouse and keyboard. Other than that, for PC, True Sight or Hit Mark, and for Controller, those two work, True Sight and Hit Mark, but you're going to get the most out of Steady Hand and Fast Draw. Steady gives plus 10 to handling and stability, Fast Draw plus 15 to handling and plus 5 to stability. For the magazine, depending on what you go with with your roll, we have High Cows, Ricochet, Armor Piercing, Big Mag Perks, those are going to be at the top of the list. For the Crucible, it's going to be Ricochet. On to the perks, the final two perk nodes have six perks in them. The first one has Demolitionist, great perk. You get grenade energy as you get kills. When you throw the grenade, you refresh your magazine to bypass the reload. The rounds come from the reserves, and it's very good that this is in the first perk node. We have Subsistence. It's been good since it was buffed, and it's a really good option for the rolls on this hand cannon. Kills partially reload the magazine from reserves, but reserve ammo capacity is reduced. I will say that a primary ammo finder on your helmet goes a long way with subsistence. That costs 3 energy, but a hand cannon ammo finder costs 2 energy. Each time you get a kill, it throws in two rounds back into your magazine from reserves. We have auto-loading holster. Decent, but not really high on the list because of the rolls that this thing has. Ambitious Assassin, large magazine based on the number of rapid kills before reloading. It's a great perk for it. Threat Detector, good perk. 
It helps with some of the weaknesses, but I would go with other perks. We have Pulse Monitor, not that good of a choice with the perk set, again, and the roles that it could have. In the second perk node, we have Rampage, top tier for the Crucible and PvE. Swashbuckler, same damage as Rampage at a times five stack, and you can instantly get to times five with a melee kill, always top tier. Dragonfly, it's gonna be a highlight for Jack Queen King, with all the damage nerfs and buffs and the enemies got their overall health adjusted a bit, Dragonfly with a spec does well now. And it's always gonna be a good area of effect perk against Ad. And it even does good damage versus Majors or a boss if they get hit with the Dragonfly explosion. Surrounded, great perk with a surrounded spec. And then Snapshot, that's gonna be for PvP. Finally, high impact reserves. I wanted to like it. I tried various ways to make it work, but other perks are gonna be better suited. Now one of the perk combinations, there is a rare perk combination that this hand cannon has. It was one that was introduced this season, and the only other weapon to have it is the Infinite Paths Pulse. That perk combo is Demolitionist Dragonfly. Mine has a handling masterwork with fast draw for that great increase to handling, and then a magazine perk. I start out at 14. Why it's cool, why it's special, is that Dragonfly collateral kills proc towards Demolitionist, just free grenade energy from one kill. It's a top tier ad clear roll. You can get a lot done with it, regardless if you're doing a grenade build or not. Because you're getting those collaterals, it gets that grenade up, you can bypass the reload. When your magazine gets down, you throw the grenade and keep going. I do value this roll, it is rare and I kid you not. It took me about 85 tries to get this roll, I wanted it for now and into the future. The second PvE roll is centered around subsistence. That's going to be with either Rampage, Swashbuckler, or Dragonfly. All of them work. Again, small reminder about a primary ammo finder on your helmet or a hand cannon ammo finder. That way you don't really get into trouble. With Rampage, we've seen it before. What's nice, you get up to that 33% more damage. You keep it there. You have on a Rampage spec for more time. Each kill drops two back into the magazine from the reserves. You can keep a chain going. The same goes for Swashbuckler. I do recommend that you melee and add first. Keep the chain going. And then you're adding in those two rounds after every kill. It's nice. And then there's going to be Subsistence Dragonfly. It's another rare perk combination, and this one's legit too. The only other weapon that has this is the Calcia Noblesse. It's from the old raid layer, the Scout. So good luck having that role if you do. Sound off in the comment section. But what's nice and what's special is that Dragonfly procs Subsistence. So all those collateral kills each are throwing two rounds in the magazine. Very unique. It's a good combo. Next is Demolitionist pairing with those three again. I talked about the Dragonfly demo roll already, but the other two are the damage dealing perks. Kind of like Subsistence, you bypass a reload because versus lower tier adds, you're going to be making that grenade energy. Once you get low, you throw the grenade, refill the mag, keep the chain going. And each are top tier in their own right. You can't go wrong with any of them. It depends on how you want to play. Pairing demo with Rampage, Swash, or Dragonfly. And then finally, Ambitious Assassin with those three again. Get kills with Rampage, Dragonfly getting collateral kills, Swashbuckler, you reload get the larger magazine it just works very stout pve hand cannon top tier and it's on a 150 frame i won't call a winner out of all these roles because they're all very good and all of them require you to do something a little bit different and all of them have worth depending on how you play the demo dragon and subsistence dragon are rare perk combinations and surrounded is good with the spec but in my opinion this hand cannon the perks that it has you can be very active on every kill go on long chains with it all the time whereas with surrounded that would be your main damage dealing perk it does work but i believe that the other ones fare better for jack queen king for the Crucible, it is 68 to the head, 43 to the body, three headshots for a 0.8 TTK. The body shot TTK is 1.6 seconds with all body shots. Magazine-wise, ricochet rounds, plus 10 to stability, plus five to range. It helps you become a little bit more accurate adding all that on. Now, sight-wise, stability for console, range for mouse and keyboard. And if you're on console and you do a max range roll, good luck to you. I do feel that other hand cannons do it better. Like right in the category, there's Waking Vigil. And I talked at the start as to why, and with Waking Vigil, there are better PvP dueling perks like Opening Shot with Slide Shot, Zen Moment with Snapshot, things like that. For the Jack Queen King PvP roles, handling does come to mind. It's a strength. So getting a handling masterwork, the correct sight, things like that, isn't a bad option out of the gate. But my top two are going to be Demolitionist and Snapshot, and the other is Demolitionist with either Rampage or Swashbuckler. With Demolition and Snapshot, you're going to be snappy, getting kills, getting grenade energy, and going from there. And with Demo, with Rampage or Swashbuckler, those are going to be the damage dealing perks. It makes your second target easier. And in that first perk column, instead of Demolitionist, Threat Detector could be there. And when I was using it on Jack Queen King, the closer proximity that I got to my opponents for this perk to proc had a direct correlation with how many times I got ran down with a shotgun. So that's up to you. I just feel that Demo is always going to be there after a kill. And it can reload your magazine, things like that. If you like Jack Queen King and you pop heads with it right on, you do you. I personally don't think it's that great of a PvP weapon. There are too many faults combined with the competition that's in its category. It kind of puts it way low on my list. PC will be better than console, 
but even there it has those same issues that we discussed, just not as exaggerated. I'll throw it on for general play, but it's not something, say I'm going for my 5500 game in comp, or the final win of a Trials card, like Jack Queen King is, isn't even on my radar if I'm using a hand cannon. It has a couple good strengths, but a lot of weaknesses, and collectively, I'm personally just more lethal with other hand cannons. So in conclusion, it is an excellent PvE hand cannon. There are some Hall of Fame roles for PvE hand cannons, and the Kindred Org it actually owns two of them. Rampage Surrounded and then Rampage Kill Clip. There's also the Ringing Nail and Trust with Dragonfly Rampage. The Jack Queen King is an easily accessible hand cannon. There's a lot of different ways to use it with great PvE perks, and all of those combinations can do quite well. For the Crucible, it's going to be up to the player. Down in the comments section, let's talk about Jack Queen King. What roles are you liking the most? And Crucible wise, what platform are you on? What input are you using? And what role do you have? How are you liking it? Let's talk about it down below. Thank you for watching, and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.